Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to talk about a new ham's choices for their first radio and some of my suggestions. So, hey, I hope you enjoy it, and you know, oh, if you can, do me a favor, go down there below and click on the subscribe button for me, and if you like this video, click the like. Don't forget to click notifications too, that way you get to get a notification when we have a new video. Hey, so with that, let's get on with the show. Hey everybody, I'm Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to cover your first radio. Now, I'm going to qualify that as you're probably watching this video because you just got your license. And if that's the case, congratulations. Or you might be in a class right now almost ready to take your license test. And with that, I'm going to give you congratulations also, because guess what? You're going to pass. You're doing the right thing. You're going to a class and you're getting some training. So that's good. Now, if you are in a class, of course, I want to thank your instructor or instructors for inviting me in visually to give my opinion on first radios for amateur radio operators. Now, what radio you do you buy? Do you buy a base station and big antennas? Do you buy a mobile uh, rig and then get antennas up on your car? Or do you just buy an HT? Well, there's a lot of advantages to having your HT as your first radio, and that can expand quite a ways before you have to spend additional money to buy another radio. And let's talk a little bit about that. So what is an HT? A handy talkie? Well, I think you know it should have been part of your study, but this is a handy talkie. Very simple design, easy to use. This happens to be a uh, Japanese handy talkie that runs about $90. It's one of my favorites. Um, but you know what? Here's a Chinese dual band. Does pretty much everything that Japanese radio does but it's about $40 on Amazon, right? That's, that's less than half the price of that Japanese radio. What are the advantages? Well, I'll be honest, the Japanese radio is probably a little better. But this is your first radio. Now, let me show you another Japanese radio you might get a kick out of. There's this one right here. This one has GPS. APRS, it slices, it dices, it'll do your laundry. Remember the kids' birthdays and the wife's anniversary. Uh, of course, I'm kidding. But this is a $500 radio. Now, I have to look at this as a first radio. Do you want to go out and spend $500 or $40? Let's see. 540. Uh, I'm going to be banging this thing around. I'm not used to carrying it. I'd go with the $40 radio. You know, and maybe you might even want to go with a uh, $90 radio. This also is a dual band. Very nice radio. Full disclosure, this is a Japanese engineered radio that was manufactured in China. That's how they got the price down to $90. And the other thing I want to cover really quick is it ain't just the cost of the radio, kids, okay? It is the cost of the radio and the cost of a car adapter charger and other chargers. It's the cost of a microphone. Of course, you're going to be buying more microphones. It's going to be the cost of um, additional battery packs, right? It may also be the cost of a battery pack that isn't really a uh, NICAD battery pack, but it allows you to put in um, regular AA or AAA batteries to power your radio. You may need that during an actual emergency. So the cost of this $90 radio, by the time I buy all that, it's probably a couple hundred bucks. Cost of this $40 radio, since it is Chinese, Parts are a lot cheaper. It could only be about 120 bucks with all that fun stuff, you know, because you're going to want multiple batteries because batteries go dead and you're not going to want to wait for it to charge. You want a radio to use while the other one is charging. You get it? Um, so 
hey, guess what? Let's say you buy this radio, or any of the ones I've talked about, for that matter, in an HT platform. You get it all programmed, because, by the way, you also got to get programming cables and maybe some software. With this particular uh, the, uh, Baofeng Chinese radios, you can use a free software package called Chirp to program your radio. So, as an entry-level thing, I kind of recommend a new hams buy the Chinese radio, okay? Uh, the reason that I say that also is you're new to carrying a radio. You're new to using a radio. Uh, you know, you might go to put this on your belt and whoop! It drops on the concrete. Maybe it breaks, okay? Bummer, your radio broke, but it's 40 bucks, okay? It's not 100 bucks or 200 bucks or 500 bucks. So, uh, leave it on the roof of your car and drive away. Oops, right? Drop it in a puddle of water. Drop it in the sink. Drop it in the heaven, uh, the toilet. <laughs> you know, this stuff happens. It happens with cell phones all the time. Uh, this doesn't have a real shock-resistant case. And, you know, a drop from four or five feet could make it unusable. So, anyway, up to you. It's your money, but... I think the money well spent would be this. Anyway, let's say you go out back, you turn it on, you try to get on your repeater, and you can't get the repeater open. Well, I'll need to buy a bigger radio. Well, no. My recommendation to try first is buy yourself a mag mount antenna. Okay, let me uh, slide this out so you can see the magnet. Now at the bottom, you just pop this baby on a pie tin, and guess what? You've got enough, just about of a ground plane, to do a pretty good job. And you could set this up, uh, you know, on top of a, a stump or something like that, or out in your front yard, on top of the car even, and try transmitting, and you might just be able to work. And that that's fairly simple, because all you got to do is unscrew the antenna and get a little adapter to connect to the inside and connect that mag mount antenna to it. That mag mount antenna, by the way, I think I paid about 20 bucks for it on Amazon. Amazon's a really good source for uh, uh, the Chinese stuff. The Japanese stuff, you may want to buy direct from a reseller like uh, r and or um, uh, Ham Radio uh, Outlet. Um, anyway, your mileage may vary, but you can get a lot of this stuff on Amazon, and a lot of it's Amazon Prime. And save a little money in the process if it's Chinese. All right, so you got that working, but now you get in your car and you're trying to talk, and you know what? You're in a giant uh, frigging uh, Faraday cage. Nothing's going to get in and out, so what do you do? Well, you still have your trusty mag mount. Pop that baby on the roof. Take this, screw that uh, coax into here, and now you can talk in the car. But you want to go and take it a step further. Get a car adapter to plug your radio in to the battery of the car, to the cigarette lighter. Get yourself a microphone for your HT. Plugs right into the SP and mic port on the side of the radio. I always have such a hard time getting this open. You see right there. And at that point, guess what? Turn it on, tune it to the frequency you want, drop it in the cup holder. You have a mobile. How well do, will that work? Well, it depends where you live. But, uh, you know, if you're in a semi-metropolitan area, there's lots of repeaters. And that may be all you ever need for a mobile. Uh, when I first got my license, I had a Chinese radio in the cup holder for about three months before I said, I really need a mobile radio, and went out and bought the mobile and went full hog and drilled a hole in my roof. And, yeah, yeah the rest is history. My wife didn't talk, talk to me for a month after that, but hey, what the heck. Anyway, with that, that's basically the gist of it. So remember, when you're picking that first radio, make sure you look at three specific things, okay? What are you going to be using it for? I mean, if you're going to be using it for emergency services or for checking in the nets or whatever, right, or just using with your friends then you know what? Any HT will do. If you're going to be using it for events that require additional uh, things like, uh, you know, mobile and stuff like that, if that's what you're looking at, uh, you know, you can get set up with that mobile. 
But at the end of the day, don't spend a lot of money on your first radio. Be frugal. Because you know what? I will guarantee you, if you really get in the hobby, that $500 HT is in your future and you'll buy it. But you don't need to buy it yet. With that, I'm Stu, AG6AG. I hope I helped you. And if you're in a class, hey, instructor, thanks. Don't forget to write down my uh, YouTube page so they know where to find me for more great videos. Okay? This is Stu, AG6AG73. Welp, that's it. Hope you got to all the information that you needed or wanted out of that. There is tons more things that you may want to know about, about being a new ham. Uh, I do have a video that might be a hair dated, but it covers all sorts of stuff for new amateur radio operators. Uh, <clears throat> the name of that video is, I just got my amateur radio license, now what? Uh, go ahead and look that up. Uh, it was a talk that I gave at the Southern California Linux Expo back in, I think it was 2016. So with that, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, click the like. If you have any questions or comments, make them in the comments down below. I try to answer them in a couple days, all right? Anyway, I'm Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air.